All right, it's just me and you in the office today. Yeah, it's funny how that happens, you know. Yeah. The uh, the other crew, like Ro Andy and Martha, they get all crazy and they talk a lot, and they're yeah. all like DTLT today. <laughs> We're gonna do this, and then what happens? Yeah, and Martha's on vacation, right? She is on vacation, and she seemed to have gone to. We got a kind of uh, some sort of tweet from her earlier today. Um, I don't know if you could pull it up with Where an image. Where did she go? Like. We haven't got raised for four years, and we're going right. to beaches with cat litter. Yeah. So she brought her own cat litter. By what did you say? BYOCL. <laughs> BYOCL to the beach. Yeah. Just in case, you know, you can see the asphalt beneath. Um, um, cover it up. Last week, uh, Jerry Slazak was actually mentioning that we weren't following the back channel when yeah. we were talking that much. I don't know if he was using the Justin TV chat, which he might have been or using Twitter or something like that. But uh, one of the things that I'm going to try it out this negative. time, it was negative. It was, he it's was typical. negative. Yeah. Typical is right. Well, um, basically this time, the way we're going to monitor the Twitter feed and the way that we want you yeah. to respond to what we're talking about is by tweeting at DTLT today. So it, test something. Yeah. So if you reply to at DTLT today or you mention it anywhere in your tweet, it should not only should Jim be able to monitor it and tell mm -hmm. me if people have questions or bring up some good points, but also it should pop up here on the video for everybody else to be able to see what you're saying. That's right. So you can totally test that now or later as we're talking, but that's at DTLT today. We're going to use Twitter as our back channel. Yeah, and try that just because it's a cool thing that I think uh, will be impressive. Right. So try it. Definitely. Experiment with that for us if you're watching. If you're not, your life's based on hate, you're going to suffer. Yeah. We're doing a lot of experimentation. I mean, we're doing that. I'm playing around with the iPad. That's right. Yeah, show me what you're doing with the iPad. I yeah, think that's um, awesome. We should, at some point, I think, have an episode where we talk about all of this, how we use the green screen and how we're using yeah. iPads and MacBooks and all kinds of things. Break down to, the TV setup. Yeah, like a meta episode, yeah. you know, where we talk about the background of what's going on. But right. basically, I'm using an iPad to do some of the camera switching. It's yeah. a application that lets you use keyboard shortcuts. You can make any button on here be a keyboard shortcut, and you can make your own layouts. So all I had to do to control the cameras was say, all right, when I press this button and it has this name, do this keyboard shortcut on the laptop that's all the way over there. Yeah. So So you can really do a remote camera switch. Yeah. Now, of course, that. we only have one camera, but switching between those beach photos or yeah. any other shot exactly. works. You can switch between, like, the desktop presenter, and with one camera, you could have several shots. Right. You could have me and you. You could have just a close-up. Well, no, you can't have just a close-up of me, but you could have, like we did, we had the blog in the background. Right. Um, we maybe have another desktop that we're We could do out. a close-up of you. I guess we could with a yeah. separate shot. A separate right? shot with you. So you could so, do that all with one camera. Yeah. We're, we're playing around a lot on a hacked-together budget yeah. of things that we can find in the office. I'm it's, loving the whole It's TV a lot stuff. of fun. It's awesome. It really it's is. Fun. I asked on Twitter today, I said, what should our topic be? And Ben Rhymes actually posted back to yeah, me. The great Ben Rhymes. The great Ben Rhymes is yeah. back on Twitter, if you didn't know that. Welcome back, Ben. Yeah. So Tech Savvy Ed on Twitter, mm -hmm. Ben, uh, basically he pointed me to a link and said, you should talk about this. And the link was an MSNBC article. Um, it was written, and it talks about uh, preventing Facebook student-teacher interaction. Apparently yeah. in Missouri, a law has now been passed. And the headline of MSNBC basically says, um, you won't find teachers in Missouri friending their students on Facebook or any other social network for that matter this school year, not unless they want to violate a new law that prohibits such contacts. Yeah. So it's As if a, teachers don't have enough laws that they're working with, and <laughs> they need another one. Yeah. Well, and what's interesting about this, so a lot of the article was pulled from a blog post by a guy named Randy Turner, uh, an educator in Missouri, yeah. I think in Joplin, actually. Okay. is where he teaches and so his blog post said a couple different good points and I'll mention some of them here it said 
It was signed in spite of considerable evidence that social networking has been a positive force in education and little or no evidence to the contrary. And then it says the signing of Senate Bill 54, which is the name of it, continues the de degrading of our profession and the only effect it will have is on teachers who've always followed the law and who would never dream of violating the sacred trust we have to teach children. We will eliminate students and former students from our Facebook lists. Yeah. So the law was, the frame of the law was to prevent sexual misconduct. That was the larger bill that was being passed, which of course, what politician is gonna say, no, I, I don't wanna, yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm for, you know. I, I am for sexual misconduct, yeah, right. I mean, come on. Exactly. So cl clearly a lot of senators in Missouri probably said, heck yeah, pass this thing without even knowing yeah. the Do consequences the of what was in it. Uh, but there's this small piece of it. So the name of the bill, in fact, the name of it is Senate Bill 54. But the name that they gave it in typical like 1984 fashion is the Amy Hester Student Protection Act, which Amy Hester was a student who was, you know, um, misconducted i don't know yeah exactly <laughs> how, how do you really say by, that uh... right yeah so and a lot of people are calling uh, calling this out as a bill that bans facebook and but i mean it's not limited to just facebook right Other i mean social media right. could be any sort of social network the bill calls out like any website that's not work related well, there's two things that immediately strike me it's like a the way in which education and teachers are targeted Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like constantly targeting education and teachers is kind of the stopgap of all societal problems. Mm -hmm. And this is not, you know, and the fact is, is you're basically saying, A, you know, teachers, they're, you know, they're going to be a link between the sexual abuse, which, you know, is, if, as a teacher, wouldn't you be highly offended, you know, right. to be like, you know, the first group you're going to kind of look at mm -hmm. as teachers? And obviously we know things happen between teachers and students. Yeah. You know, I don't think nearly as much as people would want you to believe. And right. I'd love to see some figures and some support of how many teachers are kind of sexually offending or any kind of, you know, real issue there. I well, mean, like, where do they back it up to say, like, this is something we got to turn into a law to basically, you know, potentially, you know, thwart any good that can come out of a relationship between the teacher and the student that is not limited to the traditional position of authority. Well, and let's keep in mind that there are already laws in place that prevent these kinds of things. Yeah, so, right. you know, these back, criminal background checks have been in, employed for much longer exactly. than that suddenly this bill comes up and this is what we're going to do to prevent sexual misconduct on children. And, it, and this is sort of seen as this stopgap measure. If, if we don't pass this, then, you know, the whole school system is going to shit. And what are we going to do about and it? What, so, it, you know. Exactly. And what does it say about trust and faith in the people we hire? Right. And what I mean, I really think what um, Randy Turner gets at is the degradation of a profession. Yeah. And that's what we're looking at, however mm -hmm. we want to frame it. We're, we're degrading to a profession so it's a completely controlled space, yeah. both for the student and for the, and for the teacher. It's not just one or the other. I mean, they're both losing out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the more and more you make it this controlled, you know, Machiavellian state or whatever you want to call Orwellian space, mm -hmm. you know, the worse it becomes for everyone and education becomes irrelevant. I think. Right. Well, when we when I was reading about this, it actually brought to mind something that happened recently in Virginia because we're battling this right now, yeah. too. It's a hot topic is social networks and educators trying to use them for educational purpose and whether yeah. appropriate use would be the correct term, I guess. And this recently came up with the Virginia Board of Education. They were considering a set of guidelines lines again tied to sexual misconduct I don't it, it always yeah. comes back to that appropriate use goes back to sexual misconduct and it's like the most extreme example exactly. you could give but yeah. like you said what politician could vote against them. right yeah you're defining policy based on those extremes that's right and so we've seen a lot of that these days haven't we right <laughs> given the debt ceiling I mean yeah. come on it's we're in a we're in a completely dystopian society yeah right now. well I was happy in, in Virginia um, Visti an organization that I'm with was partnering with several other organizations and we were able to go to the Board of Education and back when they were drafting this policy and there's it I should say was not a law it was a set of guidelines for sure. schools now it's unfortunately you can 
it, they are quite different, but at the same time, you're saying these are going to be your guidelines by which you write your school policy. Well, school policy is might as well be law for you. You're going to lose your job if you violate school policy. That's right. And the people writing that policy are looking to the Board of Education for these guidelines. So they were writing the guidelines. Although losing your job and getting arrested are They different. are separate things. Yeah, definitely. And I'll get back to that. But the Virginia Board of Education, they had written in there at one point uh, about appropriate use of technology. Yeah. And it was very strongly worded, basically along these same lines, not yeah. to use social networks for work-related use of any kind, um, not to use cell phones and text messages with students at all, period, huh. um, things of that nature. And VISTI partner with several organizations to say, look, there are innovative things happening in school systems right now. You may not be aware of them. Let's show you a few about why that a yeah. blanket policy like this is not a good idea. And so luckily, I say luckily, I mean, it was a combined effort that we eventually won out. And so I'm going to read to you what the new guidelines are for the prevention of sexual misconduct, the specific section of what it says. It says, Absolutely. digital technology and social networking provide multiple means for educators and other school board employees to communicate with students and personalize learning. Local policies should ensure that electronic and online communications between employees, volunteers, and individual students are transparent, accessible to supervisors and parents, and professional in content and tone. So that's, yeah. I think, where that professionalism comes back. And, and this idea of transparency I thought was really huge. This idea that, yes, you can use these alternative means if you're very open about it and yeah. say, look, if you want to be a part of this group, if you want to see the communication happening between me and my students, that's totally cool with me. Well, look what Brian Jackson did up in Vancouver uh -huh. with his students. He's a student, he's a teacher, a high school's teacher up in uh, Vancouver in high school. And he used Twitter and uh, a radio station DS 106 radio to bring his students and their talents on into the open web as a way to showcase them obviously with their approval but to me that was a remarkable kind of moment to see like yeah this media is for that personalizing learning personalizing relationships and mm -hmm. bringing back the human element um, George Siemens who I'm a big fan of does a lot of great stuff he brought this up recently in a post that you know he's got the kind of social media on we right he's done with Google Plus He's done with Twitter. He's done with this. He's done with that. And you know, I understand that. I go through that regularly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, one of the things that's amazing to me about social media, however you want to frame it, and amazing to me that a bill like this or a law like this is really going to put in great jeopardy is there is a place here for interstitial relationships beyond the intellectual kind of quotes and the large blog posts right. and this kind of pr completely purely professional. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of the relationships we can't always define, yeah. right? That are playful, that are imaginative, that actually don't only predicate themselves on the study of a book yeah. or the thought. And I, I think these social media are really good at that. Yeah. And I think to kind of discount whether you like Facebook or not or like Twitter or not, to discount them and discount that as somehow less than scholarly or less than intellectual really puts us as a community back into this kind of really unfortunate divide between this idea of play and what we do when we're not at school yeah. or when we're not being intellectual. And I think the social media, if it did anything cool, it kind of broke us out of some of those very strict dichotomies. And, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And I think what's important, you know, when people write policies like this, one of their things is, well, there's alternatives to Facebook. If you want that interaction, we can sell your product. You know, I'm yeah. sure, you know, as That's soon as right. something like this is written, the people, the vendors come out of the woodworks and say, oh, you need a social network for your students to use that's safe? Yeah. I'd be happy to sell you one. There's a million of them. Yeah, and uh, Randy Turner mentioned that in his blog post. That as soon as they passed this law, people said, well, if you want a social network, I can sell you a social network. But you're not going to sell the students on that. You're not going to no. make students use that or enjoy it. You're the, just going to further den denature the experience of education and of learning right. from a process that I think is far more genuine and authentic. And yeah. the more and more we litigate, the more and more we litigate how teachers teach, the more and more we define what SOLs or standards of learning or however you want to say it, they need to meet on any given day or any given week the more we kind of turn this process into a tailorized system. And that's why a law like this is very easy, mm -hmm. because it takes the idea of education that we all understand, we all see is happening, takes this kind of process of mechanization of learning 
and says, okay, not only that, but we're going to kind of root out any kind of outside influence that may complicate this. Right. Whether it be, because what's well, the complication? The complication is based in relationships. Yeah. And when you root out relationships like social media, you make everything simpler, mm -hmm. more objectively working. And if you look into the, we have 33 seconds left, but oh, look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is awesome. I hope this is on TV. Yeah. But, I mean, this is really cool. But that's 25 seconds. I don't know if anyone tweeted. Yeah. But look at the, the decorations. Yeah. This can be pretty cool. Or, or if it doesn't show up in the recording, you're just going to look like you're high. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 13 seconds. You know, I, I, I'll post these links on our page, and uh, we're open to discussion. If you tweet with the link yeah. to the blog post, it shows up as a comment. That's right. So that's something that you should know as well. Uh, I, I don't think we're done talking about this. I'm glad that Virginia is leading in that respect, but I'm not hopeful, yeah. I think, that in the long term that schools aren't going to still enable these kind of policies. I, I think they're going to become more and more. And I, I mean, I think you know, the love affair with the social web should just be starting. Yeah. But I think for, for, for too many people, and I understand why there's so much going on out there, there's, what do we do next? But I mean, this is the beginning of an era, yeah. you know, and more and more institutions like schools, universities want to kind of you know, foreshorten it and get back to business as usual. And that's scary. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, good call. All right, till next time. Thank you.